Welcome to another time of Methodist Voices in Word and Song. I am Charlotte Rookwood Brown, your liturgist. Your preacher for today will be Sister Lilith Deacon. Our readers are from the Anata Bay Circuit. They are led by the Reverend June James, Sister Judy, Jody Ann McLeod, and Sister Paulette Nelson. To worship psalm 130 out of the depths i cry to you lord lord, lord hear my voice let, let your ears be attentive, attentive to my cry for mercy if you lord kept a record of sins lord who could stand but with you there is forgiveness so that we can with reverence serve you I wait for the Lord. My whole being waits, and in his word I put my hope. I wait for the Lord more than watchmen wait for the morning, more than watchmen wait for the morning. Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. Our hymn is, My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Thank you. 
prayers of adoration, confession, and thanksgiving. Let us pray. Mighty God, you are the Lord of the universe. We adore you. Nothing exists apart from you. Without you, we are nothing. Today, we acknowledge your grace freely given, always available, and mighty to deliver, even as we celebrate our status as an independent nation. As your chosen ones called to serve you, we affirm your love at work in our world, transforming, recreating, and redirecting us to purposeful living. Lord, we love and adore you. Amen. Amen. For you. to invite you now in the silence of your hearts to make confession to God. Lord, we confess our slowness to respond to your grace. We have often ignored the prompting of your spirit, leading us to loving actions and, and, and courageous living. We admit to encouraging unwholesome thoughts, unkind words, and injurious actions. We have failed you in so many different ways, denying your power within to love and inhibiting your grace to flow to others through us. Have mercy and forgive us, Lord, that we may be watchful over others as brothers and sisters in your household. Make us one in you, we pray, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear then God's word of grace. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Our sins are forgiven. Amen. 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 Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Lord, we thank you, our Father, for your gracious and priceless gift of eternal life made possible in your Son, Christ Jesus, our Lord, who is the source of our hope and joy. We thank you, God, for the successes we have achieved 
at the Olympic Games, for your provision and enabling grace to live our lives meaningfully. As an independent nation, keep us dear Lord in your presence always. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. So I just have a brief word for my children and young people this morning. I'm sure all of you have been watching the Olympics. And I know I hear the pans beating because when we win a gold or a medal, lots of excitement, enough noise. And when we lose, our athlete made some error. Lord, we get so sad, we're down. But isn't that the nature of sports? Sometimes we're up, sometimes we're down. We can't win all the time. I wonder, although you've been watching, I wonder if you know who won the bronze medal for the 100 meters hurdles for women. Yes, Megan Tapper. And who won the 100 meters for women? Yes, that's right, Elaine Thompson Hero. And the 200 meters for the men? Elaine Thompson, hero. So yes, we have been doing wonderfully well at the Olympics. And do you know that they are history makers, both of them? Yes, Megan is the first Jamaican woman to medal in the 100 meters hurdles at the Olympics history making and Elaine Thompson hero is the first woman period not Jamaican woman but the first woman to win 100 meters and 200 meters in two consecutive Olympics history making history making so yes we have enough reason to celebrate at this time of independence if you look in Megan's high school magazine, this is what he, it said. Her ambition is to be the best hurdler in the world, to become the face of Nike. And her destiny is to be an Olympic champion, hurdle champion. Can you believe that? In the case of Elaine, this is what she said. She said, you are what you manifest, what you demonstrate. So she has written down on her phone, she says, 10 beliefs. Let me read three of them. She, it says, I will run 10.5. I will run 21.5. I will be the fastest woman alive. And then she says, I say it, I believe it, I work for it, and I pray about it. I pray about it. My young friends, your life is a gift from God. Like Megan and Elaine, you too can dream big. Trust God, work hard, and live your lives to achieve your dreams. Live purpose-driven lives. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for all our children and young people. Help them to give their lives to you and to rely on you as they seek to realize their dreams. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Our collect for the day, let us all share in that prayer. God of our pilgrimage, you have willed that the gate of mercy should stand open for those who trust in you. Look upon us with your favor, that we who follow the path of your will 
may never wander from the way of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We're going to invite our Old Testament reader to come at this time. The Old Testament reading is taken from 2 Samuel 18, verses 5 to 9, 15, and 31 to 33. The king ordered Joab and Abishai and Ittai, saying, Deal gently for my sake with the young man Absalom. And all the people heard when the king gave orders to all the commanders concerning Absalom. So the army went out into the field against Israel. And the battle was fought in the forest of Ephraim. The men of Israel were defeated there by the servants of David. And the slaughter there was great on that day, 20,000 men. The battle spread over the face of all the country, and the forest claimed more victims that day than the sword. Absalom happened to meet the servants of David. Absalom was riding his mule, and the mule went under the thick branches of a great oak. His head caught fast in the oak, and he was left hanging between heaven and earth while the mule that was under him went on. And ten young men, Joab's armor bearers, surrounded Absalom and struck him and killed him. Then the Cushite came, and the Cushite said, Good tidings for my lord the king, for the Lord has vindicated you this day delivering you from the power of all who rose up against you. The king said to the Cushites, Is it well with the young man Absalom? The Cushites answered, May the enemies of the, my lord the king and all who rise up to do you harm be like that young man. The king was deeply moved and went up to the chamber over the gate and wept. And as he went, he said, O oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would I have died instead of you? O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our next hymn, I vow to thee my country, numbered 524 in the VIP. I
We're going to invite now our reader for the epistle taken from Ephesians chapter 4, reading from verse 25 through to chapter 5, verse 2. So then, putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be hungry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your hunger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, which you are marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander together with all malice and be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and give himself up for us a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel is taken from St. John chapter 6, reading verses 35 and 41 to 51. Glory, Glory to you, O God. Amen, amen, amen. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose mother and father we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise be to, to Christ, Christ our, our Lord. Lord. Amen. Our hymn is, My Faith Has Found a Resting Place.
after the singing of that hymn, you'll hear from the, from the preacher for the day, Sister Elith Deacon. My sisters and brothers, I greet you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is a great joy to be able to share with you today at this special time of year when we are celebrating so much about emancipation, independence, and of course, the feet of our athletes at the Olympics. I'm happy to have shared with, to be sharing and to have shared with my sister, Charlotte Rookwood Brown and brother Donovan, who only a few weeks ago celebrated the 100th anniversary and birthday of their mother, or sister, a stalwart in the church, a mother in the church, Sister Mavis Little of Gordontown. And thinking of celebration, it is always helpful when we are celebrating to take a little time to take stock of ourselves as we give God thanks for our achievements. There are always some serious questions to be answered even while we celebrate. Let us pray. Lord, we bless you and honor you for all that you give to us each day. And now, Lord, as we reflect in these few brief moments on your word, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts may be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Now, in our Old Testament lesson, we heard a question asked by David in 2 Samuel 18, where he says, Is it well with the young man Absalom? Now, David, as we know, was a mighty and valiant king. I remember as a child, one of the verses that I learned I think it was at school. Saul has slain his thousands, but David his ten thousands. And many other of the mighty feats that David achieved. Now during his kingship, he had much to celebrate. Because when you do the little homework that I'm going to give you, which is to read from 2 Samuel, all of that chapter, you will see how much David did as a king and a warrior. Yet his life was full of misery in many respects. David was anointed by God in a special way. And we do not have time to go back into how God called him. And how he was anointed and appointed by Samuel to lead God's people. Yet despite all his achievements... David had some flaws, and these flaws were mostly personal. And so by the time we get to where we are reflecting today, to where David is asking the question, is it well with the young man Absalom, much has happened in David's kingdom. Over the past six weeks, we have been hearing in our Old Testament lessons about some of the experiences of David. One that stands out most dramatically in our minds is the encounter that he had with Nathan after he had conspired to have Uriah killed so that he could take Bathsheba as his wife. When Nathan approached him and gave him the story which we know well about the rich man who took the little sheep, little lamb of the poor man, and how upset David was. And Nathan's pointed words to him, you are the man. And David was repentant. Out of that experience, we have the wonderful psalm, which resonates with all of us as we can identify with what we need to do when we have sinned before God. And how daily we need to ask God to create in us clean hearts. David was told by Nathan that the sword would never leave his kingdom. 
And even though when you read in your homework, how God had entered into a covenant with David and indicated to him that his kingdom would stand forever. This sword never left David's kingdom. His internal difficulties, his family squabbles, his leadership style was challenged in so many ways. The young man Absalom brought to his father's kingdom a challenge to take over. He was not willing to wait until the time had come. In fact, it would have come to him if he had waited by God's will. However, when we read in the passages of Scripture in 2 Samuel, we will see how David's son, Absalom, conspired to kill his brother Amnon because Amnon sinned grievously by raping his sister. She was Tamar, Absalom's sister, and also Amnon's sister. And we don't have time to go into that story. But I urge you to read and to see how the young man was filled with anger and violence was swelling up in his heart so much that he arranged for a feast at which he invited his brothers. And when Amnon came, he had previously conspired with his servants that when he gave the sign and said the words, they should slay Amnon. And that he did. He ran away and was in exile. And then by another conspiracy, he was invited to come back to his father's house. And when he came, he sought advice from some of David's chief counselors. One who had fallen out of grace with David, a man named Achitophel, about whom the great 18th century poet wrote the, the, the long and beautiful poem, although I didn't think it was long and beautiful when I was studying it, Absalom and Achitophel, in which the writer spoke of the dangers and the evils of revenge and evil and malice and hate. But, thankfully, in that poem, as in our experience as Christians, the story does not end in rage and violence and hate. This man, Achitophel, was a high-ranking counselor in David's household. But as I said, he had fallen out of grace. He was, coincidentally, I must tell you, the grandfather of Bathsheba. Sometimes we miss that point. He encouraged the young man, Achitophel, to disrespect his father by laying with his father's concubines in public, which had been something that had been prophesied to David by Nathan would have taken place. By the time David is asking the question, is it well with the young man Absalom? There had been great turmoil. So David had reached a point in his leadership, both as a king and as a father, where he had to take stock of his actions. He had failed miserably as a father to upbraid his sons when they did wrong. He said nothing to Amnon. And when Absalom disappeared because of the evil that he had done, David never tried to say anything to him either. In other words, he was silent. Silent, some commentators said, because of his own past and his own experience as an adulterer and a murderer. He couldn't say anything. And sometimes, my sisters and brothers, as a people and as a nation, we are in silence because we are co-conspirators with some of the evil that is taking place 
in our community. I remember some years ago, a judge upbraiding a mother who came to court to defend her son who had slapped a young lady and cut her. And the judge said, you mothers come here all the time to say how innocent your sons are. You must stop it. And in that conspiracy of silence and upholding what is wrong, we cannot even answer honestly, is it well with us? So at this time of emancipation and independence, we must be asking ourselves as children of God, is it well with us? Is it well with our nation? Is it well with our church? Are we living in unity with one another? Or are we conspiring by hate and anger and malice against each other to bring each other down? David can teach us a lesson or two. Despite all that the young man, Absalom, had done to him to disrespect him, and to conspire against him to take over a part of his kingdom as he did. Yet he had it in his heart to ask, is it well with the young man Absalom? He who had experienced forgiveness at God's hand could extend forgiveness to one who had dealt with him so brutally and indecently and disrespectfully. Listening to the news, a few days ago, there were four items I heard, all of which were violent. Family members killing each other. And after that was an item about the disrespectful approach of an officer of the law to a member of the Jamaican community. My sisters and brothers, at this time as we celebrate... And as we are joyful, let us ask ourselves, is it well with us? And so my sisters and brothers, I urge you today, look inside yourselves and ask, is it well with me? Is it well with my country? And if not, why not? What part am I playing in keeping things from being well? Well in our homes, well in our communities, well in our congregations, well in our district. When we backbite each other and when we undermine each other, as we see in the Old Testament lesson, then my sisters and brothers, it is not well. And we are encouraged in the epistle lesson which was read for us today, about how we are to live together as God's children so that it can be well. It can only be well when we are in unity and in harmony with one another. Jesus himself continues to remind us that it can be well. It can be well with us. In our gospel lesson this morning, we are reminded where Jesus says, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never hunger and I will raise him up on the last day. So despite my sisters, the negatives which abound, there is hope in Jesus Christ. And it can be well. I want to read you a few verses from the Jamaica New Testament. Because I think it sums up in an apt way what the Lord is saying to us in the language that we understand. Here is what Paul says in Ephesians, part of the reading. No do nothing for make God Holy Spirit ball. I him live in a unu and put him special mark on unu for sure say unu belong to God. And say one day 
God I go free uno cause of that him save uno for. Top cherry belly if you know one another. I like that. Top cherry belly if you want another. Stop being envious. Stop being hateful and malicious and angry with one another. That is not a state of health. That is sickness. And tap backs up, backs up, and I get mad. We don't know one another. Tap it. Tap cuss out and tear down one another. And you know nothing wicked to one another neither. You know nothing kind and good to one another. We remember this verse in English. Be ye kind one to another. You know nothing kind to one another. Same like how God pardon you. Know. Seek what Jesus Christ do. I see him so. Uno fi pardon uno one another too. That is the state of health. Is it well with you? Is it well with me? Jesus calls us, or the tumult, of our lives wild restless waves. Day by day, his sweet voice soundeth, saying, Christian, follow me. Jesus is calling us today so that we can be well. He has promised us relief. He says, come to me all who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. What an invitation. My sister, my brother, salvation is free. Take of that bread, the living bread, Jesus Christ our Lord, so that it can be well with you. Is it well with you? Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for spiritual health. We thank you for spiritual healing. We thank you that through our Savior, Jesus Christ, it can be well with us. It can be well with our souls. And so, dear God, as we commend ourselves into your hands today, we ask that you will bless our nation and heal us of the sicknesses which stalk our land. To you, O oh God, we give the glory, the honor, and the dominion because we know that your word is true and your faithfulness is new every morning. For Christ's sake we pray. Amen. In response to the message we received today, we sing the hymn, My Faith Looks Up to Thee, numbered 218 in the VIP. want to remind you of the Gamut Virtual District Summer Camp being held from Monday, August the 9th 
through to Wednesday, August the 11th. The camp will start from 9.30 to 1 and then from 5 to 7. And this camp targets age group 15 to 19. The activities include Bible study, discussions, there will be a movie night, and a number of motivational talks. So please, young people, please register for Gamut. And then ladies and young women, older women, women, there is going to be holiday with a difference. So we're calling all our women, young, old, in between, young at heart, to holiday with a difference. Come and nourish your heart, your mind, and your soul. This is from August the 12th through to August 14th. It will be a virtual camp. The link will be provided once you register. And the registration fee, a mere $500. So please, all ladies, let us register for holiday with a difference. We're going to be having presentations, Bible study, of course, emotional, spiritual, and physical well-being activities. So please, ladies, let us holiday with a difference. Thank you. God's word says, honor the Lord with your wealth and the first fruit of all your crops. Then your barns will fill to overflowing. Lord, we thank you that you have blessed us in so many ways. And Lord, we thank you that you have placed it in our hearts to give. We just pray now, Lord, that as we receive this offering, that you'll give us the wisdom to use it wisely, to extend your work here on earth. This we pray in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. And now let us pray for others. Each brief petition, I will end with the words, Lord, hear our prayer. We place before you, God of heaven's armies, all who are going through difficult times, nations facing the challenges of terrorism, flooding, collapsed buildings, and in the Caribbean, the volcano in St. Vincent, the murder of the president in Haiti, the pol political uprising in Cuba, and the bombardment of the Jamaican people with financial hardship, crime, and violence. Remind us, Lord, that you are near to us because you, God, are with us and you will never leave us or forsake us. We pray that in the midst of our trials, we may claim your promise. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord Jesus Christ, the church is your beloved bride, and we look to you to lead your people. We ask now that your word would be clearly and faithfully proclaimed in the family of your church, and that through it, all would be challenged, encouraged, and transformed. We pray that church leaders would be protected from temptation, complacency, and idolatry. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, graciously hear us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of our families. But we ask now for your helping hand in restoring love within our families. We pray that your love keeps us united always through happy and sad times, through sickness and health, through job loss and promotions. Help us to forgive each other's faults as you have forgiven us and help us to keep no record of each other's wrongs. Almighty God, let us aspire to live in peace with everyone. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, graciously hear us. Dear Lord, we plead now for the protection of our children and young people. They are surrounded with distractions of all varieties, but Lord, it is under your grace that they live. Grant them a sense of discernment 
as you hold them close to you. We pray that you continue to provide them with opportunities whereby they may grow into their full potential. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, graciously hear us. Finally, Lord, we come to you today asking your protection and health for our essential workers. Provide them with the ways and means to prevent exposure to the coronavirus. Grant them the time they need to rest, eat well, and relax from stress. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. us. Amen. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn is Take the Name of Jesus with You. Jesus with you, shine of sorrow and of love. He will joy and comfort in you. Take me everywhere you go. Precious me, oh how sweet. invite the preacher, Sister Lilith, to pronounce the benediction. And now let us receive the benediction. Into God's gracious keeping, we commend ourselves. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us and with our loved ones wherever they are this day and forevermore. We close with the singing of the National Anthem. <laughs>